In a few of the most recent episodes of American Artifact, we've been looking at some of the items in the JFK room of the Gettysburg Museum of History, including a suit that belonged to JFK and comes with a rather touching story, and the blood-soaked leather that came from the car that JFK was assassinated in. But there are other items in the JFK room of the Gettysburg Museum of History, including items that belong to a figure that really complicated this whole story. Jack Ruby. Jack Ruby is best known for shooting Lee Harvey Oswald um, just after the Kennedy assassination, but uh, who was Jack Ruby? Um, he's kind of a mystery man. We have some pretty interesting personal artifacts from Jack Ruby in our collection. I've always been fascinated with the JFK assassination and um, a lot of the JFK artifacts stem from um, Robert White, who was a very famous collector who had a lot of Kennedy items and he was able to buy a bunch of Ruby items from Ruby's brother, Earl. And um, I'm going to go over some things. Now Jack, Jack Ruby grew up in Chicago, Illinois. He was kind of a street thug. He, um, you know, he, he ran in kind of uh, criminal uh, circles when he was young. He, and there's all kinds of theories about his ties to um, organized crime. But what we know for sure is he owned a nightclub in Dallas, Texas. He moved to Dallas, Texas in the 1950s. And uh, I have some items that associated with that, but first I want to start with this. This is a check that is actually signed by Jack Ruby, and there's a bunch of those in the collector's market. Um, his brother sold his items to Robert White, um, but this one is the earliest one I've ever seen, and it's for $1,500. It's dated 1946, and this is right after he got out of the military. This is an original photo of him, of Jack. That's Jack Ruby right there, and his... Uh, army uniform with a girl and um, this check is signed Jack Rubenstein. Uh, Jack's real name um, was Jack Rubenstein and he shortened it to Ruby um, for whatever reason. Um, so by the time he got into Dallas he opened a series of nightclubs and the one he had in 1963 was called the Carousel Club. This is Jack Ruby's business card from the Carousel Club in Dallas, Texas. And the club was what we would call today a strip club, I guess. Um, it was more of a burlesque club in those days. Uh, those kind of clubs were a little bit different back then. They tried to give them an air of, um, of uh, class and have like real shows and stuff. But really it was, it was a, what we call a gentleman's club today, I guess. So he had girls working for him and they served drinks and they had a bar and um, he became friendly with a lot of the Dallas Police Department. They would come in there and uh, hang out. And so he, he was very familiar with the, a lot of the Dallas police officers. He, he, he liked them to come in. He liked to associate with the police. I guess it gave him a feeling of being protected because clubs like that were always in danger of being harassed by law enforcement because they would push the envelope a little bit. So this is Jack, um, and this is in the 1950s and he is with a girl there and we believe that's um, maybe one of the people that worked at his club um, either a bartender or maybe one of the showgirls this is a contract from the carousel club it's a standard um, form for um, American Guild of Variety Artists as they called it back then and it is signed by Jack Ruby now he wrote, wrote Jack Ruby, um, he signed most of his stuff, Jack Ruby, after the 1940s, and he's listed as manager. And um, the artist name on here, we see right here and here, is Buttercup. So he was managing Buttercup and employing her at the Carousel Club, and it has her rate $100 weekly, and um, and this is dated 1962, and so it's uh, right before the, 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 when he shot Oswald. So those are a couple of 
Carousel Club artifacts that are pretty interesting, gives a little bit of informate or uh, insight to Jack Ruby and his personality. There's a man with a gun. It's absolute panic. Absolute panic here in the basement of Dallas Police Headquarters. Detectives have their guns drawn. Oswald has been shot. There is no question about it. Oswald has been shot. Pandemonium has broken loose here in the basement of Dallas Police Headquarters. On November 24th, 1963, Jack Ruby was wiring money to one of his uh, employees or dancers at, at her club at a Western Union office in Dallas, Texas. And that Western Union office uh, happened to be across from the Dallas police garage and he let himself in there or a police officer let him in who may have known him and he walked in there and just as Lee Harvey Oswald was being transferred out of the Dallas jail garage Ruby saw him, he said he saw a smirk on his face or a smug look, or I can't remember the exact quote. He always carried a gun, Ruby being kind of a gangsterish kind of guy with nightclubs and running in those circles. He pulled out a 38 caliber snub nose revolver and shot Lee Harvey Oswald, the accused assassin of President John F. Kennedy, in the stomach. And it was caught on film, it was caught on photographs, um, and this is the actual exact moment that that happened and the bullet is entering Oswald's stomach at that time. This photo um, was signed to Robert White, the famous collector who got a lot of Jack Ruby stuff by Jack Ruby's brother and it's an interesting inscription to Robert, my brother, November 24th, 1963, Earl Ruby. Like he was proud that his brother was murdering um, Lee Harvey Oswald, and some people were glad that he did it, you know, and, and um, you know, I think it would have been better to have a trial and find out more, but because of that, it led to a lot of uh, conspiracy theories and all kinds of wild things, and, um, you know, but we do know R Ruby shot Oswald, and uh, we have it on film and everything. So anyway, Ruby was arrested and um, he was tried, and uh, we have some artifacts from that, but <clears throat> I guess this would be the time to say this is the shell casing from Ruby's gun. That came out of Ruby's gun. It's the shot that killed Oswald. It's from Robert White's collection. It was a, obtained from Henry Wade, the Dallas DA, and um, it's a pretty wild piece. Um, the gun also is in private hands. Um, the gun was uh, returned to Earl Ruby, Jack's brother, and he sold it. And another collector has that. It's been offered to us, but it's the price is astronomical. Um, but it's the only time that I know of in modern history that a murder weapon went back to the family of the murderer. And why is that? How did that happen? Well, Johnson, who became president after Kennedy was assassinated, signed a, I believe it was an executive order, but I'm not sure on that, that allowed Warren Commission exhibits, which was the group set up to investigate the assassination and aftermath, he, he, it would allow Warren Commission exhibits to be returned to the people who owned them. So Jack Ruby's brother, being the kind of guy he was, he petitioned to get that gun back because he knew it was historic and it was valuable and he could sell it for a lot of money, which he did. And um, that's how a lot of this the Kennedy assassination items got out. I mean, there are amazing Kennedy assassination items and Dallas police items and other things that have gotten out or investigation items that have gotten out into collector's hands because of that executive order that Johnson signed in, signed away, you know. So we benefited from that and um, we have some neat items and um, we had several Warren Commission used items. But I want to talk about what happened at Ruby. So he was tried and convicted for the murder of Lee Harvey Oswald. This 
This jacket is one of Jack Ruby's suits. He wore it in the 50s, probably to his club quite a bit, but he also wore it to some of his trial. This was worn during Jack Ruby's trial. Now, another thing that Ruby did when he was in jail, you know, he sat in jail for several years before he died. He eventually got cancer and died. Um, he, he would doodle and um, he made these ge geometric shapes and um, I'm not exactly sure how he did it. It's, it looks like it's folded around something and he would make these things and uh, just to pass time and they're really interesting and I, I've had several of them over the years um, and you know kind of kind of is a glimpse into his mind a little bit you know he, he was definitely a, an unusual person and he signed this one and it's dated September 1965 so he gave it to thanks for everything he gave it to someone and I'm not sure who that is um, but he would give them to friends and people who came to visit him. All right, well, uh, there you go. Uh, some of the artifacts directly tied to Jack Ruby and the, the death of Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, pretty amazing, and, and you can come and see it all for yourself uh, right here for free at the Gettysburg Museum of History.